Joining us now for an exclusive is Ben Axler from Spruce Point Capital Management. Ben, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thank you for thank you for having me. So you so you shorted it back in February last year. I think I think you're up on it. It's down from that point, but it was down a whole lot more before this year and all the hype surrounding AI. What are you doing now? Well, we're re revisiting the thesis. I mean, if you look back at what we said a year ago about the company's aspirations being too high, about concerns with the product and its adoptability, about the price target, about its use of capital, everything came true. In fact, you know, we scored our predictions. The only thing we were off on was the magnitude of the decline of the stock price. It, it went down to $10 below our target. Um, so we fast forward to today and what's changed? And the answer is really nothing other than a press release and an attachment of the company to the latest uh, AI buzz, which is the chat GPT. But there's so many unanswered questions here, such as how are they going to make money and what is the customer use case here, that we see nothing but a billion-dollar valuation increase, all based on speculation and hope. And based upon our field research, which involves talking to former employees knowledgeable about this situation, you know, we have real concerns about the promotional timing of this press, a press release by the company and also about, yeah. you know, how, again, how will it translate into revenues and upside potential for shareholders? So the press release you're talking about is when C3 AI said its generative AI product would be launched March 2023. And, and we're waiting for that, and that got investors excited. We asked the company, Ben, in anticipation of this interview for a comment. They, d they didn't want to provide one. But we have talked to Tom Siebel a number of times here on CNBC, including on this show recently. And we asked him about all the hype around the equity market and his stock price. And here's what he said about that. The complexities and vagaries of the equity markets are a little bit beyond me. And, uh, you know, it certainly has its mood swings. Uh, that are that are um, that are a little bit again. This this is beyond my ability to uh, really deal with our business. Okay, we we're, we're building a rapidly growing, you know, enterprise application software company, and our objective is to establish and maintain a market leadership position in enterprise AI. Are they not doing that, Ben? Establishing a market leadership position in enterprise AI with all sorts of companies like an Alphabet, well, Amazon, and, and Microsoft? Well, I would encourage you to go back to our original report a year ago. There's no question they have, quote, unquote, partnerships with, you know, the Amazons and the Googles and the Microsoft. But what does it mean? Are they actually paying these partners um, to distribute their products, or are they getting paid? You know, it's it's very unclear. And, and so, you know, again, we have a company here that has high aspirations that, you know, has an acknowledged product in enterprise AI, but what does that have to do with generative AI, okay? And how are their customers, such as Baker Hughes and the U.S. Air Force, going to use a bot that generates text and images? It's just not clear um, what the revenue and business model is here and why investors should be enthusiastic. Now, let's bear in mind here, the analysts who we generally disagree with have not raised their revenue targets one dollar. Um, and let's also recall here the companies talked about going cash flow positive, and yet the market analysts still have it going negative. So this company has a real credibility problem, and the stock is getting well ahead of the actual fundamentals and understanding of how this company is going to make money. The CEO has said numerous times in interviews that they're going to be profitable in the next few quarters. I mean, he's made a lot of comments that haven't come true. Uh, he's also said the stock's undervalued, but yet, uh, to the best of our knowledge, the company wasn't buying stock when it was ten dollars a share. Um, they don't, uh, and also the insiders uh, weren't buying up either. So if, if he's always believed it's undervalued, uh, why not use that eighty-five million dollar buyback to buy stock at ten dollars? So I think there's a lot of you know evidence here of companies saying one thing and something that drastically different happening, and we think the setup is yet again here where the where once earnings come, investors are going to see this is an aspirational story that frequently disappoints Wall Street. I do wonder, you know, the stock being up 77 percent in the last three months, just how much has to do with the fact that its ticker symbol is AI. And retail traders have kind of rushed back into the markets. And you've seen a lot of these sort of meme stocks getting love again, just with this whole trend and buzz around AI. I mean, one could argue their two best assets are, are number one, the cash, which, by the way, the cash is being depleted. Uh, and number two, the ticker. Uh, you know, outside of get, you know, let's, I have to remind everybody that this is a company that frequently pivots its business model to what the best and hottest technology tra trend is. So if you use the Wayback Machine, first it was C3 Energy during cap and trade. Then it was C3 IoT during Internet of Things. 
And C3 AI, when AI buzz was hot during, uh, during COVID. And are they going to change the ticker to a company C3 GPT? I mean, one can only speculate. But again, this is a company that has a history of promising things that just don't pan out. And with the stock getting up uh, and adding over a billion dollars here on speculation, we think investors are just setting themselves uh, up for disappointment. And if you don't believe me, again, look at what Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, and all the bulge brackets have to say as well. They're also constructively negative on the share price.